Hey guys, Sarah here from Yarn Lab Canada and today I just wanted to share with you 10 uh, tips and tricks for either knitting or crocheting stuffies. So the inspiration behind doing this video is that uh, Chelsea and Sue from the Legacy Knits podcast uh, on YouTube, link in the description below, are currently hosting a stuffy along. Um, so you can knit, crochet, sew, whatever you want to do to create some sort of stuffed toy. Um, and it's really exciting and I'm participating. I'll show you what I've already finished for that. Um, and that would be my crocheted Charizard stuffy. So he looks super cute and cushy and he plays well with my previously made Blastoise stuffy and these guys are of course um, going to be toys for the twins that I'm expecting in ooh, we're pushing like seven weeks now but since I have made these and a fair number of other stuffies both knitted and crocheted over the years I thought I would maybe share with you um, 10 sort of tips and tricks going through the process of making stuffies that might be helpful for someone who's not so, uh, who's more new to uh, this realm of fiber arts. So let's get right into it. Number one, basic skills. So if you're going to create a stuffy, regardless of whether you're knitting or crocheting, there's a couple of techniques that you should be familiar with before getting into it. First off, you definitely want to know how to work in the round. Um, with crochet, that's pretty simple. It doesn't differ at all. Um, from working back and forth. You just start with a loop um, or a magic loop at the beginning and then build your circles out. With knitting that's going to involve either working on DPNs or in magic loop, uh, particularly because your rounds will be um, at times quite small. And personally, I've done magic loop for a couple things now, personally I recommend DPNs for stuffies because if you're knitting in the round for stuffies you may at times get down to like as little as like six stitches um, in your round and for magic loop that's you're gonna have a whole lot of cable and needles for just working six stitches so for knitting um, I definitely recommend and do all my knitted stuffies on DPNs um, unless you get to a diameter big enough to go to cables for crochet it's still just gonna be your regular crochet hook so working in the round um, both knitted and crochet stuffies are typically going to be done with very simple stitches so if you can work in stockinette in knitting and if you've mastered the single crochet you should be good to go there um, you're going to need to know how to do increases and decreases for both knitted and crocheted chef stuffies um, any shaping that kind of is going in and out would be increases and decreases and then the more advanced technique that you will see pop up quite a lot in stuffies are short rows um, and so this can be a bit intimidating but short rows allow you to put essentially a turn in your project um, for instance I think I have a picture I'll share of a um, crocheted horse head that I did for one of those um, those old-fashioned horse toys where you have the head on the pole with reins and in order to do the bend around the neck you would be doing short rows. In crochet it's quite simple you're just gonna sort of you know stop your row usually join it with a slip stitch and then turn around and go back the other way. For knitting you might want to check out some videos on YouTube for different short row techniques but essentially stuffies are going to be created working in the round simple stitches increases and decreases and then potentially some short row shaping. Number two, the yarn that you would use for stuffies. So I personally do most of my stuffies out of acrylic yarn. And I'm a big fan of Red Heart Soft for stuffies. Um, it's a Aran or worsted weight yarn. It's kind of got a good sheen, so it gives um, the stuffies sort of a very cartoony sort of appearance, a very poppy kind of appearance. And it's just really great and soft, comes in a whole bunch of colors, and so over the years of doing stuffies I've built up quite a bit of a stash of small balls of Red Heart Soft. Um, but really any acrylic yarn I think for me is usually the way to go with stuffies especially if you're going to be gifting them to children. I just think that the acrylic is going to hold up longer. Um, as it's being handled you won't get as much potential to have felted areas. I don't, you don't tend to get nips and noils yeah, with acrylic yarn. Um, yeah, so acrylic yarn typically holds up better. I have done some knitted stuffies in wool and they look great, 
Um, wool stuffies tend to look a little bit more uh, old-fashioned and you typically are going to want to do your stuffies in solid colors. You can do variegated and hand-painted yarns for stuffies by all means, but especially if you're working smaller parts, it might take away from the overall look. So what I recommend if you're going to sort of enter into the world of doing a lot of stuffies is to build up a multicolor stash in one particular brand of yarn. So next up is gauge. Our gauge swatch is really essential for working stuffies. For most knitted projects and even some crocheted projects too, you absolutely want to do a gauge swatch before starting your project. For stuffies, it's not as essential. Um, I certainly have never sat down to do a gauge swatch with stuffies. What you basically want to do is just match your hook size or your needle size to the yarn. And the way that I do that is on most ball bands, um, you'll have the recommended hook and needle size and when you're doing a stuffy you want to definitely drop down one or two sizes so for instance most uh, Aran or worsted weight yarn will recommend a 5.5 millimeter um, crochet hook and my Charizard I did in a size 4 millimeter crochet hook and this is just going to tighten up your fabric and make the integrity of the stuffy a little bit better and prevent the filling from coming out or showing through the little holes in your fabric. So gauge isn't as important. What you want to do is just make sure you're matching your hook or your needle size to the yarn by dropping down a couple sizes from the recommended. And then you could do the same exact stuffy pattern all in worsted weight yarn and get a large stuffy. Or if you're um, interested in doing some of those little teensy tiny ones, you could do the whole pattern all in fingering weight yarn with the corresponding drop down needle sizes and get a scaled down version of the same stuffy. So, you know, there's actually a lot of potential you could do sort of like a Russian nesting doll set of stuffies. They wouldn't nest, but um, just by going through the different sizes of yarns. So gauge swatches, not important, but you do want to make sure that you're matching the yarn to the hook or needle size and then sticking with it. And then the other thing that I do want to say is you want to watch out for yarns which claim to be the same sort of size but are actually quite different. So for instance, many yarns will have the number 4 for medium or Aran or worsted weight on the ball band, but different brands are going to say they're a number 4 but they can be quite varied. So for instance, um, Red Heart Soft is a little bit on the bigger side, whereas Karen Simply Soft, which is also labeled as a number four, is on the smaller side of that range. So if you are going to incorporate pieces from both, you might potentially get, you know, a larger piece working in the blue color, and then if you went and did a Karen Simply Soft in the white using the same hook or needle size, it might come out smaller. So especially if you're just starting out, it's best to sort of stick within one brand. What you can do if you do have different brands is you can just divide out the meters or yards per hundred grams on the ball band and sort of estimate whether or not your yarns are truly the same thickness. And I do have an example of this on my Blastoise. So the um, tan colored and the blue colored yarn are both Red Heart Soft. But in looking for a brown yarn that I liked for the back, I had to go up to the Red Heart Comfort. Red Heart Soft and Red Heart Comfort are both number four sized yarns, but this brown does have a bigger gauge. And so I had to adapt the pattern a little bit, otherwise the brown shell on the back would have been quite a bit larger than the tan shell on the front. So like I said, gauge is both important and not important with working stuffies. Match your hook to the yarn size and drop down a few to get a tighter fabric and then just be careful for two yarns masquerading as the same size, which really aren't. Number four, buying stuffing for your stuffies. Typically, you're going to want to use polyfill um, to fill your stuffies. And I have priced this out at a couple different places, and believe it or not, Walmart is usually the best place to go. And if you're going to be making lots of stuffies, invest in getting one of the big bags of polyfill. Um, You'd be surprised how quickly you work through it, especially um, if you ever do a cushion project, like if you ever go to like a couch cushion or something, you'll clear a whole bag faster than you know. But um, they sell the polyfill at Walmart, at craft stores, at fabric stores, 
and Walmart typically has the cheaper price on it. Um, it's just 100% polyester um, stuffing and I find that's fine. Some people do opt to go, I know um, at Fabricland here in Canada they do have sort of organic, I think cotton based, um, sort of stuffing for stuffies that you could go with. Um, and then they also have like eco-friendly ones and recycled ones, all sorts of stuff, but I just go bulk and buy the big bag at Walmart. The other option for smaller stuffies is you could use yarn ends. So this is just the, um, whenever you finish a project and you're weaving in your ends and you're trimming it off. I have kept all of mine from the last year or so in this jar and this can make great stuffing, particularly for smaller projects. Although you won't get as cushy of a feel, it might pack in a little bit dense, but it is another great option to stuff your stuffies with leftover yarn ends. Um, and then a third option that you do see sometimes, especially if you're only going to make one or two stuffies, is just to sacrifice a pillow. And I've done this in the past. When I first moved out to Calgary, I was just here for a year and I didn't want at the end of my placement here to go and buy a big bag of stuffing knowing that I wouldn't finish it all. So I actually just cut open a couch cushion, took out the handful that I needed, sewed the couch cushion back together, and stuffed my stuffy with that. Um, I've even seen some people online recommend that the absolute cheapest way to buy polyfill is to go to Ikea and purchase the 99 cents um, sort of plain boring pillows that they have in the couch cushion section and just use them for polyfill. You could do that. It might actually be the cheapest way to get your hands on polyfill. It feels a little bit wasteful to me to, you know, buy couch cushions specifically to take the filling out and then, I mean, it's fine if you do go on to use the fabric from the cushion for something else, but anyways, it is another option. You can always sacrifice a pillow in the name of a great stuffed toy. Number five, stuffing your stuffy. So, when you begin to make your stuffy, and with this Charizard, um, he started down here and the body and head were worked all in one piece going in this direction, and it's really important that you are stuffing your stuffy as you go. Um, this is for two reasons. One, if I had waited until I was at the very end to stuff his head, it would have been kind of difficult to get consistent stuffing throughout, and it would have been awkward trying to get a big bolus of stuffing for the head up through the skinny neck. So, especially for shapes like long arms, um, anything long and tube like, you definitely want to stuff as you go. The second reason that stuffing as you go can be really important is that sometimes the shapes might not look accurate until they're full. So, for instance, with Charizard here, um, you have some shaping to sort of make his head have the muzzle section. And when it was not stuffed, you would look at it and say, how the heck is this ever going to have the shape of a head and a muzzle? But as soon as you have some substance in there to push the fabric out into the desired shape, um, you could totally see that it worked just fine and the pattern is great and he has a great head and muzzle. So stuffing as you go will both be easier for getting the stuffing in and then will also um, sort of inflate your fabric shape um, into the final shape so that you have an idea that your project is working and looks the way that it should. So always stuff as you go in my opinion. Um, just makes things easier. Second, when you put your stuffing in, you don't want to take a big handful of stuffing and shove it in all at once because that's going to make clumps and it might trap some spaces so you won't get as even of a fill of your stuffy. You always want to take smaller pieces and fill it up piece by piece. It does seem like a bit of a pain in the butt, but you'll get an overall more consistent stuffy. So you're gonna break your fiber fill or polyfill apart into smaller pieces. It doesn't have to be tiny. It's not like we're asking you to put like cotton ball sized pieces in, but don't stuff by the handful. Stuff in small amounts and you'll get a more consistent toy overall. And then finally, if you need to get the stuffing into really tight spaces, I find that using the back of a straight needle, um, so like the, the end on the back of a straight needle, not a DPN, but a traditional straight needle, or the back of a crochet hook can be useful to really poke stuffing down into uh, tight spaces. Like for instance, I was able to do that and get stuffing right down into the fingers on my Charizard. Number six, junk in the trunk. 
So when you're making stuffed animals, if you want them to be able to sit upright, some patterns will support this on their own, but some might be top heavy. So what you can often do, and you'll see this a fair amount, is to weight down the bottom of your stuffy. Um, I've done this for this squirrel stuffy that I made a couple years ago for Valentine's Day, and I'll put a picture up. Um, and all that you do is I just sew a little baggie of scrap fabric on my sewing machine, and you can fill it up with um, beads, with, um, they sell like the bean bag, the little plastic bean bag bits um, at craft stores. Anything that's a little bit heavy, in all honesty, that squirrel stuffy has a little bag full of dimes in the uh, bottom of him. And that's just going to give your stuffy a little bit more bottom weight so that they'll sit up uh, better on their own. It is a really great option, particularly for stuffies that might not be play toys, but might be sort of hanging out on a shelf more often than not. Um, if you are going to do that in a stuffie that will be given to a child, then you might want to definitely go the way of actually buying the, um, the little beanbag beans that they sell at craft stores. Make sure that the uh, packet that you put them in is well uh, sewn and seamed together so that you don't have little bits leaking out that kids could eat. And you just sort of, as you're stuffing, you put it in the bottom before you finish off the bottom of your stuffy. And I've had great success weighing down the bottoms of my stuffies a little bit to help them sit, um, to help them be a bit more bottom heavy so that they'll sit up on their own. Number eight, assembly. So, some stuffy patterns, both knitted and crocheted, will be made pretty much all in one piece. So, um... You might see there are sock monkey patterns that you sort of work both legs, join together to um, go to the body in the round, come up, and then just like a bottom-up sweater, you would work the arms, join those in like you're joining in sleeves, come together, and then knit the head up, and so you end up with essentially an all-in-one piece stuffy. Um, and you'll see those in both knitted and crocheted patterns. However, a lot of stuffed toys are going to be made in parts and then require assembly. So for instance, Charizard has a body, a tail, wings, each arm, and, each of the arms and legs were all made separately, and then assemble. So the first tip here is that if you are making a stuffy in parts, be sure to, when you start and when you finish that part, leave a fairly long tail, like at least this long, because you're not gonna wanna have to use extra yarn and have even more ends to sort of weave and hide in at the end you want to be able to use the tails from when you cast on and when you bind off to attach the parts to the body. And it might not be intuitive as to whether or not the it's going to be the first tail or the last tail that you're going to want to use. So make sure you leave extra long tails. Use those to attach your parts together. Um, and then be ready to be intuitive about assembly. So sometimes the patterns will be written in such a way that says you're going to attach the wings at round 35, and I'm just making this up. This isn't how this pattern was in particular. But sometimes it will say you're going to attach the wings at round 35 and give you a very specific place to piece all of your parts together. But other times they might have pictures. You might just have to go with the picture on the pattern and a bit of intuition to piece your stuffy together at the end. So when you're going to start assembly and begin sewing your pieces together, you have two options essentially for needles to use. Um, you can go with like the sort of bigger, fatter um, darning needle, but what I prefer is to use a very sharp, like you'll stab this right into your finger if you're not careful, but a very sharp metal needle. And that's because you might not always be sewing through the spaces between stitches, and I find that you'll actually get more, in more integrity if you are sewing through the stitches and you'll get through the stitches much easier with a sharp needle. So what I'm saying is when I sewed for instance this belly on, on the front I went through the spaces, so when I sewed this belly on, on the front I went through the spaces, but the fabric in behind you might be going through a space between the stitches or you might be going directly into the stitch itself and the sharp metal needle is just going to give you a lot more um, ease of ability to work with it. So assembling my stuffies, I always recommend a sharp metal needle um, of a good length so that you can work with it without stabbing yourself. 
The other thing that is very, very important is you want to get yourself a set of these little safety pin like stitch markers because, and this is really important for symmetry, when I put my stuffies together I pin all of the pieces on first so if I'm going to do the two arms I'll use those little plastic pins to pin the two arms into place so that I can hold them away from me and say does it look even, does it look symmetrical. This is really important when it comes down to facial features so sometimes um, you'll have eyebrows or nostrils that are separate that need to be attached to the face and if I don't pin them in place first then I'll sew one on and then it'll be impossible to get the second one to match up and you'll get these wonky, completely non-symmetrical looking things. Um, even if it's not a matter of having two parts, if you're something longer like this belly patch, pinning it in place will allow you to make sure that everything is lined up the way that you want it before you go and sew it on. So, assembling your stuffies, my recommendation is go with a sharp pointy metal needle and get a hold of some of those little um, safety pin type stitch markers so that you can pin all of your pieces in place. You could do it with straight pins but you're probably just going to stab them into yourself so the plastic safety pin stitch markers are the way to go in my opinion. Number eight, eyes and facial features. So when you're doing stuffed animals you have a couple of options for the eyes that you're going to put on those animals. Um, you could go into your button jar and find buttons that match and look great as eyes, and I've done this before with great success. Um, you can use those safety eyes, and those are the ones that um, are in most sort of conventional toys that look like a real eye, and then they screw into a back piece and are theoretically safe for children in that because it's been screwed through the fabric it shouldn't be able to come out, but children and dogs will definitely still be able to get those eyes out of fabric so for me if I am gifting a stuffy to a small child I like to go with option number three and that is to embroider the eyes on because worst case scenario if they pull something out it's just gonna be yarn and it's not gonna be like a hard eye that they're gonna eat and choke on or just you know you don't want your kids swallowing and eating buttons right so um, definitely consider all of those options there is a fourth option that is to, um, no, there's a fourth and a fifth option. You'll also see facial features and accessory points cut out of flat felt and then sewn on. Those look really great, but uh, in my opinion, take a lot of extra time. And then I've also seen some instances where they've taken uh, loose, like spinning fiber or felting fiber, and needle felted the. Um, eyes and features into the stuffy. So there's a multitude of options for eyes and then for faces and details you're just gonna want to get out some yarn and again I like to use my sharp darning needle and embroider on details. So for instance the line of his mouth, uh, the lines on his shell are just embroidered on after the fact. Number nine, be ready to improvise. So you're gonna see, as you start creating more and more stuffies, some patterns are very, very specific, very, very detailed, and will give you exactly, at every point, what to do and where it should be. Others are gonna be more, um, here's all of the shapes, go to town. So you need to be ready to improvise a little bit. I'm not saying that you have to be ready to create de novo parts for your stuffy, but for instance, the claws on these guys, um, if you just follow the pattern exactly, it gives you sort of a flimsy um, little claw with a little bit of holes in it. And so I left myself a really long tail and wove the white yarn up and down several times through each claw in order to give the claw a little bit more firmness and integrity and to help it hold a triangle shape better. That's not written in the pattern. Um, maybe if you talk to the designer they might recommend something like that. but. I just looked at it and I said, Ugh, I don't really like the way that this is looking right now with my yarns and my technique. So what can I do to make sure that it looks the way I feel like it should look? Um, you might also improvise on features in the face. Maybe the pattern called for safety eyes and you want to just embroider your eyes on and that's going to require some improvisation. The other thing is you need to be ready to go off stitch, if you will. So 
you're not necessarily always going to be joining your crochet stitches or your knitted stitches into the conventional previous stitches of the next row. You might have to crochet down the side of something. You might have to pick up and crochet, um, like say you were doing a fin. You might just need to pick up hooks or loops along the back of the fabric. This is particularly true of crocheted stuffies. Anything that you can get your hook behind, you can crochet into. And so you need to be a little bit willing and able to sort of break conventional rules um, that would apply in flat knitting because you are working in a three-dimensional object here. Uh, and then finally, you might also need to both knit and crochet on your stuffy. For instance, um, with Blastoise here, the white trim in the pattern, it called for a thin crocheted tube, but I thought that's gonna take way too much time and effort when I can I-cord knit a tube way faster to do the white trim here. So he's 90% crocheted, but there is a little bit of knitting. This fish, on the other hand, is knit, but then for the fins, I crocheted them because it's easier to um, sort of pick up and crochet a fin than it would have been to make a knitted piece and sew it on. So be willing to break some rules, be willing to bend some rules, and be willing to improvise a little bit when you're making your stuffy. That's going to help you to achieve the result that looks the best. If you follow things exactly to a T, um, and you're not using the same yarns, you're not the same hands as the designer, you might get a product which has followed all of the rules 100%, but doesn't look quite right at the end. So always step back midway through your stuffy, look at it and say, is this looking the way that I want it to look? And be willing and able to improvise to get to that point. And then finally, number 10, picking your patterns. If you go on Ravelry and you check off the selection for toys, you will find literally thousands of options for knitted and crocheted stuffed toys, um, both free and paid patterns. Um, and so the, the selection is pretty endless. So my tips for picking a pattern to work with are first and foremost to always check the finished objects. So it's always heartening to see that um, you know, 10 or 11 people at least have made this pattern before and their results looked kind of all right. If you check the finished objects thread and there's a whole bunch of stuffies that turned out looking nothing like the designer's pattern and it's a paid for pattern, you might want to consider purchasing a different option. Finished objects can also be a wealth of information. Uh, what I like to do is check the finished objects Look and see if anyone has made it using the same yarns that I'm planning on using. Um, I mean, this is pretty typical stuff. You would do this probably with sweaters or shawls as well. But um, I always like to look and see, okay, someone else has made it using Red Heart Soft, so um, it worked up great in that, that particular thing. You can get your colorways from finished objects. So I always like to see a stuffy pattern that does have a number of finished objects already completed. However, I won't dissuade you from being the first person to dive in and produce finished objects for my Blastoise and my Charizard. There were no finished objects, these were brand new patterns. Um, so I had nothing to go on, but the pattern was inexpensive, so I felt like, okay, if the pattern's horrible, at least I'm only out $2. Patterns were fine and great, by the way. But if there aren't a lot of finished objects and other people currently making that pattern, and it's a paid for pattern so you can't see it before you buy it. What I would recommend that you do is send the designer a message on Ravelry and just see if they respond back right away. Send them a, hey, I'm thinking about making your stuffy and I just wanted to know before I bought your pattern that you will be available to answer any questions that I might have as I'm coming through the pattern. Um, because I have sort of tend to found that some, not all, stuffy patterns, the patterns don't appear to have actually been test knit or test crocheted. And I've definitely been through patterns where I have found the errors in the pattern or there's something that might have been intuitive to the designer about assembly that isn't quite intuitive to me. And it's always good to know just by sending the designer a message, hey, I'm looking forward to making your pattern. If you never hear back, that could be a red flag that if you do come to an issue in that pattern, um, you're never gonna get past it. Uh, but if they respond back and say, yay, that's awesome, 
then you at least kind of know that the designer will be there to help out um, should you encounter any sort of hiccups in the pattern. Anyways, those are my 10 tips and tricks for knitting and crocheting stuffies. I hope you found this video helpful. I tried to cover from start to finish um, sort of all of the areas that you might run into trouble making your own stuffies. If you have any questions at all, feel free to um, ask them in the comments below, or you can contact me on Instagram and Twitter. I am uh, at Yarn Lab Canada, or you can contact me on Ravelry. I'm Turner Classic there. That's all for now. Happy knitting and happy crocheting.